Hi guys, it's Melissa and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about me becoming homeless. And today is March 2nd, 2024 and I became homeless March 2nd, 2021. So first off, before I get into it, a uh, trigger warning. Um, I'm going to be talking about various different types of things like physical abuse, um, homeless and depression, etc, etc. So if you think that anything that I'm going to say in this video might trigger you then please do not watch this video but thank you for those that are still here and that are going to be watching today so to start off march 2nd has pretty much always haunted me since 2021 but this year is very different um every other year before this i was so depressed on this day i would always cry i'd always mourn my family i would always mourn my experiences and i would grieve and i would be so upset because i was so sad and depressed within my life i didn't feel happy and this year is completely different i am so grateful to be here i haven't cried today so far but any tears that i will be shedding today hopefully are tears of joy because i'm genuinely so grateful to be here right now for a little bit of a backstory my father was very sick around the time that covid came around he didn't have covid it was actually an undiagnosed illness that he was struggling with for over a year he became very sick he would have these attacks I'm not going to go and describe his illness. I still don't even know if he's dealing with these attacks today. I don't even know what that illness was because I have been in contact with my father for several years now. My father almost died on my birthdays, both my 18th and my 19th birthday. He spent it being hospitalized. Um, so it was very hard taking care of him as the oldest. It became my responsibility to take care of my father. Regardless of all the harm that my father's actions have done towards me and towards my family, I still loved my father. So I don't regret taking care of him. Taking care of him was very hard for me to watch because my father was a very physically fit man. He kind of looked like he was in the military. A lot of people would tell me that he was intimidating. And when he became sick, it just drastically changed his entire appearance. He went from being a physically fit man to being like a skeleton almost. And it was very hard for me watching that, watching my father become sick and he was the sole breadwinner of our family. Financials have always been a huge worry for my family growing up. We didn't grow up with money. And seeing him become sick, not be able to work overtime due to this illness was very hard for me because I felt like I had to do something about it. I felt like I had to help provide for our family financially because my father was no longer working enough overtime to be able to let us comfortably live. I took it upon myself to try to help and fix that. And at 17 years old, I ended up of creating a small business, which actually did pretty well. And something that I'm so proud of to this day, it gained a lot of traction online because of my story, because I wanted to help and support my family because my father was sick and he was having these attacks in the hospital. I had made this business for my father. Growing up a lot of time, I didn't feel like I was good enough for my family or for my father's love. I felt like I had to do something extraordinary in order for my parents to love me. Even though I was doing well, it just wasn't enough for my father. It wasn't enough for him to stop physically abusing me. The sole purpose of me creating that business was in order for me to have funds in order to support our family until the abuse continued and I felt like what I was doing wasn't appreciated enough even though I was taking care of my father and then I was also trying to financially support our family. I ended up of taking those business profits that I made and I ended up of pouring it into my education because I was in nursing school at the time. So I ended up of paying all of my college tuition for the first year with the money that I made from that business. And I'm really grateful because I'm literally three months away from graduating nursing school because I never gave up. No matter how hard it was, no matter how many things I had to juggle during that time, I didn't quit school and I'm three months away from graduating. I don't plan on going down the nursing route. I'll just have this degree as a plan C of some sort. Um, some part of me still loved my father and even today I think some part of me still does because talking about my father getting sick is very hard for me because I felt like my father was dying with something that we didn't know what it was and it was really hard for me watching that and trying to protect my siblings from seeing it and just taking on the responsibilities of taking care of him and trying to financially support our family it was really hard for me. Continuing taking care of him for over a year. My father ended up of getting foot surgery, which was completely unrelated to the illness that he has. He just has really bad feet and I just so happened to inherit those bad feet. So I have no idea what I'm gonna do with my feet later on. <laughs> he ended up of getting foot surgery because of that, his attacks would happen more often and he was on crutches and he was pretty much couch or bed bound and I had to do basically almost everything for him. A week later, my brother ended up of breaking his arm. I ended up of taking care of both of my brother and my father 
while my sister would go to school and my mother would go to work and I was taking care of them at home all while juggling my online nursing courses. I'm really glad that they were online due to COVID because that was the only way that I was able to take care of my family at the time. And eventually the day came March 2nd, 2021. I ended up of going into my school for a chemistry lab that we had to do and I was coming back and because COVID was still a thing and because there was a chance that my father could catch COVID and he was dealing with an illness, I didn't want him to get sick due to fear of anything happening to him. So when I would come back home from school, I would make sure to wash my hands, put away my clothes, and get cleaned up before I would go and interact with them. And my mother picked me up from school and as soon as we came in through the door, we're in an Asian household, so we take off our shoes before coming inside. I still do that to this day. And so we didn't even take off our shoes yet. And my father was already ordering us around to go and do things. And I remember my mother was saying like, you have to give us a second. We didn't even take off our shoes. We didn't even close the door yet, but we'll help you, but give us time to go and get ready. And I remember my father didn't necessarily like that answer. He had to take the cast off of his foot that ended up of getting surgery on it and it was not a pretty sight and while we were washing his foot he ended up saying well like i had to s remind you guys several times and say it as soon as you came through the door because i didn't want you to forget because i know you you wouldn't have done it and he was speaking to me at that point i responded saying well how can you know someone if you don't spend time with them but word for word that's what i said i still remember it to this day because that one phrase set my father off. My father had immense anger issues and really anything could set him off growing up as a child. And my mother even, like, I felt like we had to walk on eggshells all the time when we were around him. I just didn't think that a phrase like that would set him off. It's true though, like if you don't spend time with someone, like how can you say that you know that person? My father just didn't like that. And he'd be like, I don't wanna hear your five cents. Just saying like, I didn't mean any offense. It's true though, like if you spend time with someone, then you know them, but if you don't, how can you say that you know them and what they're going to do? And he got so mad. He was threatening me. I dealt with various different types of physical abuse when I was younger, like slapping, choking, punching, um, throwing me at different things, throwing things at me. This time he didn't get physical yet, but I could tell that this instance was very different. And I remember my brother was sitting down and my father looked at him and yelled at him saying, pass me the crutches so that I can go and beat your sister with it. It made me so angry because a lot of time I grew up trying to protect my brother and my sister from being on the reciprocating end of my father's physical abuse, but also watching me have to go through that, I didn't want them to see it. The fact that my father was just so angry that he just wanted to go and involve my brother in that, it made me so angry. So much adrenaline was pumping within me and I decided that I was gonna take a stand and I was telling him like, Listen, I'm not a little kid anymore. I'm not going to be bullied. I'm not going to be bullied in my own house, especially after taking care of you for so long. I mean, like you would have suffered if I wasn't here taking care of you and I'm not going to be spoken to like that. You can't threaten me. You can't go and do these things and it's not right. And I remember standing up to him and he did not like that. I'm not going to go and cower in a corner and cry anymore and I'm going to stand up for myself. And he did not like that. And my brother ended up passing him the crutches because he was scared. My father was actually getting up. My mother is very physically fit. She goes to the gym every single time with my father. She literally had to go and get on top of him to hold my father back. And I guess so much adrenaline was pumping within him that he was just able to get up and he was trying to get to me. Usually growing up, my mother didn't really re protect me. But this time, I don't know, something in her just took over and she was holding him down. It was kind of like in those cinematic movies where kind of like one person is sacrificing themselves for the other and telling that person like run and it felt just like that and I remember my mother was holding him down telling me like run Melissa like please like go and I was saying like no like I'm not leaving you guys I'm not doing this and <laughs> I remember looking at her eyes she was so scared and I'm talking about this today because I'm going to take my power back. I'm not going to let this hold me back. Why am I crying? Usually I don't cry about this. I had to make a choice within a split second on what I was gonna do if I was gonna stay there because I genuinely didn't know what was gonna happen because I think it was the first time in my life where my father was threatening to me and my father had just not done that before and telling me how he was gonna me. I was scared, but I didn't want to look like I was scared. She yelled at me to run, and I did. And I took my jacket, I took my combat boots that I got from Walmart for $20, I still remember. I didn't even put them on. He was trying to get up to get to me. I remember he pushed my mother off of him, and 
I unlocked the door because we have several locks on our door and I was scrambling to get out. I didn't even put on my shoes and I ran. It wasn't until I got way up the street that I put on my jacket, I put on my shoes and I noticed that I was hyperventilating and I think that I was having a panic attack. The only thing that I could worry about was like, is my brother and my sister gonna be okay? In my head, I kept wondering like, should I go back for them? But at the same time, that was the day that became my journey of being homeless and bouncing around from place to place. So it's not like I could just go and pick up my sister and my brother and take them out. So I ended up of bouncing around from place to place. My number one goal was to not stay at a homeless shelter because I didn't know what would happen to me there. I remember watching Law & Order SVU a lot growing up. I remember watching episodes where women would get SA'd at these um, homeless shelters and I didn't want staying at a homeless shelter to completely ruin my life. I was couch surfing at the time and I eventually had to leave the place that I was staying with. I was staying with my ex and his family at the time and that wasn't necessarily a good place for me to be in because his family was alcoholics. I didn't like being surrounded by alcohol because my father was an alcoholic when I was younger and even up until I got a bit older he would always get very angry if he had something to drink so I didn't like alcohol, I didn't like ingesting it, I didn't like the overall thought of me drinking because I didn't want to be like my dad. I ended up of leaving that place um, because it wasn't safe for me to be there. And so my ex at the time, we were together for three years. Um, we were dating since I was 15 and he was 18. And he really took advantage of me and he used me and this is not what this video is supposed to be about, but I was essayed by him since the moment that we met and I thought that because he had done this to me, I had to stay with him because I grew up in a religious household and I was taught to not do things with someone else until you're married. And that was my goal. I didn't want to go and do things like that. I valued that and that was something that I wanted to say for my future partner, my future husband. And he took that from me, even when he knew I was so uncomfortable, even when I said no. and. I thought that because he took this, I had to stay with him. So I ended up staying in this relationship for more than three years. Every time I tried to leave, I couldn't kind of like my mother. And it wasn't until later on I realized that I'm like my mom, that I wanted to leave this bad relationship and yet I couldn't. Not only to mention that my partner was cheating on me since the moment we met, cheating on me consistently, always saying that he's gonna change, he's gonna be different. And I thought I could change him, but it's, it wasn't my responsibility to do that. He ended up cheating on me on a three-year anniversary and even continuously after that, and I had had enough. I was dealing with a lot of things at the time. I just didn't want to deal with this extra baggage from someone who was just taking advantage of me and didn't even respect my boundaries and was just using me, cheating on me and hurting me. I didn't want to put up with it anymore, so I ended up of couch surfing once again. Eventually, my family ended up of moving other states. So I ended up of staying in their older apartment and I was ready to pay for it. I ended up of getting a job and I was saving so much. I was working so much. My nursing semester began. It was really hard for me because my nursing semester got harder and I ended up of working two jobs. I was working as a store associate in a store in the Oculus in New York City and after less than a year of working there, I ended up with being promoted to being their manager. I was getting paid pretty good. Really grateful that I found that job because I was able to save a lot of money for myself just in case that anything bad would happen. I was very conscious of money growing up. My family, we didn't come from money. We were always um, thinking about our finances. Finances became a burden for me ever since I was younger. So I saved a lot of money. Remember, I would go in for my lectures I would go in for my clinicals and I would work sometimes even 50 plus hours a week. That was normal for me. I was working in New York City and then I was also a babysitter. I became so burnt out, but you know what? I didn't have any other option. I didn't have anyone else who was gonna go and pay my bills. I didn't have anyone else who was gonna go and take care of me. I knew that if I depended on my parents financially that they would always have some type of control over me. There came a time when he apologized to me and he tried to have a relationship with me again and you know, the inner child in me was so hopeful that maybe my father could change, maybe he could be a real dad, and it felt like it for five, six months. That was very temporary. November of 2021, my father ended up of threatening my life again. It was just me and him in the apartment, and I could tell that he was getting aggravated, and so I decided to remove myself from the situation. And I have it all on audio because growing up, I had learned to record a lot of things for my own protection because when I was younger I had a CPS case filed 
accidentally and nobody believed me. So since then I would keep record of things, recorded this entire altercation. Father ended up of breaking through the, through the door to get to me and there was a mirror on the back of the door. So the door was broken, the mirror glass shards were everywhere and I'm not gonna talk about what happened after that. I have been in no contact with my father since November of 2021. I haven't spoken to him, I haven't seen him. Actually, I tried to have a relationship with my mother and my siblings trying to get them out, trying to save them of some sort because my mother said she was gonna divorce him, she was gonna leave, she was gonna do all these things. Victims of abuse typically can't leave. It's so hard for them to leave and my mother, she just couldn't do that for herself. I just couldn't convince her to get out. I tried to be there for my siblings. Later on, I tried to take custody of my siblings after my father had gotten physical with my brother. But I remember giving my siblings the option we grew up going to a very small private religious Christian school because my mother had worked there at the school during that time. So our tuition was covered. It was hard growing up like that. I had gone throughout that entire school my whole life. There were only four people in my high school. Like the school was very isolating. It was very small. It was very strict. I didn't really have any life growing up from just that school, from church and home. My siblings had moved states. They were finally able to go to a public school. They were finally able to make friends for the first time. They were finally able to socialize. They felt like they were actually living a childhood. Before I was gonna go and try to take custody of them, I remember asking for their opinion because no one asked me when my CPS case was filed. I had confided in someone and they told me that they were obligated to report it and I begged them not to. And them reporting it kind of ruined my life. It made my father hurt me more. It made him more angry at me. It made me very depressed and even more suicidal than I already was. I wanted to give my siblings an option because I didn't want them to hate me. I'm only 19 years old and I didn't want to go and take this huge responsibility onto my shoulders of taking care of two kids because I had the space to take care of them. I had the money during that time to take care of them because I was saving a lot and I was a store manager. I was very consistent in my routine, working in school. And I thought that, you know what, I could do this. They have a place that they could live. I loved my siblings with all my heart. Sorry, I don't want to cry. <laughs> They're really so willing at 19 years old to come up with a plan to literally give up the rest of my life, trying to support and trying to take care of them. And I gave them the option because I didn't want to go and take that responsibility onto my shoulders and yet that wasn't what they wanted. And I didn't want to force them into a decision that would end up of having them hate me for the rest of my life, you know? They said that they didn't want to because they finally felt good in the school that they were in. They were making friends. They didn't want to leave their life there even though they were dealing with issues at home, I realized that there is nothing that I could do. I can't save people who don't want to go and make changes. I tried to have a relationship with my siblings. My siblings didn't go through the same abuse that I did. We had completely different childhoods and a lot of my father's anger and abuse was directed to solely my mother and then eventually it just became solely me. And I remember writing a really long text message to my sister telling her how much she means to me, telling her how I'm willing to give up anything in my life to go and take care of them. And it was the way that she responded to me that really, really hurt me to this day, to the point where I decided to stop being the one to contact first. I remember telling her how much I loved her, said all these things, and she just said thanks in all lowercase. Not even trying to reciprocate the same kind of love or gratitude towards me. From then on, I stopped being the first one to reach out. And it has been well over a year since we've talked because my siblings have just never gone out to be the first one to talk first. It has always been me trying to go and look out for them, trying to protect them, trying to do this, trying to do that. And I feel like they had only come to me whenever they needed something. You know, for the first time, I just wanted to be the one to be checked in on for once. I've never blocked my siblings on anything. They're free to reach out. It's just that they don't. I've accepted that, said that I was no contact with my family, but in reality, I never blocked them on anything. I haven't blocked my parents. I haven't blocked my siblings. Just, they just haven't reached out to me because it's always me reaching out first. No contact saved my life. I'm very grateful for my fiance and for my best friend because if I didn't have any sort of support system while I was going through all of these things and being homeless and bouncing around from place to place, I can definitely say that I would not be here. My fiance has been such a huge support for me. Sometimes when I was homeless, I would have to be on sidewalks, um, sleeping in apartment stairwells, sleeping in parks. I just wanted somewhere that I could sleep for a few hours so I could get up early to go to work the next day or go to school the next day. We slept in the car together so that he could drop me off to work the next day. He was such a great 
support system for me and especially my best friend samantha she has been there with me through almost every single one of my crying sessions and now i get to sit here and i'm thriving because these people were in my corner when i was literally had absolutely nothing samantha my best friend and john my fiance they were there for me when my father broke through my door and broke my mirror and when i was having a panic attack and i was wandering through the streets not knowing what to do and when i had filed a police report and all these things like they were there for me they picked me up off of the street <laughs> i will always be grateful for these people being my life <laughs> i'm gonna cry <laughs> i will always be thankful for these people being in my life because they were my biggest support systems you know so many people they grow up with families financially supporting them being there for them and doing all these things and you know my family why am i crying okay my family wasn't like that for me. They weren't financially supportive. They weren't emotionally supportive. I feel like they did everything in their power to have me struggle. Having them in my corner to help me get through my days, to listen to me vent and to encourage me that life won't always be like this. I will always appreciate them. I'm trying not to cry, but I can't do it when it comes to thanking the people that I care about. I can literally sit here today because of the help that they've offered me because they were in my corner. It's people like that that are very rare to find. They're hard to come by. They've always been there and I always appreciate that. <laughs> Why am I crying? I just did all my makeup. But for me, I was very determined to get out of that hard place. I was very determined to make something of myself. I struggled for a very long time, for several years with grieving my family, with dealing with being homeless and not having a place to call my own and just Overall, being so burnt out from working so much and being in school and trying to make something out of myself, but it was so worth it and I'm really grateful for the resilience and the determination that my younger self have. After years of struggling, I feel like I can finally thrive. I feel like when they say I'm living my best life, like I am truly living my best life. If I could go back in time, I wouldn't change a single thing about my childhood. I wouldn't change what happened to me because it made me who I am today. At 18 years old, I didn't think that my life was worth living. I was really struggling with depression and being homeless. And I'm really glad that I get to be able to sit here and talk about this topic and bring awareness to it and share my story because it's something that I usually always kept to myself. Within the past year, I've become more vocal within my experiences, realizing that other people are struggling and I want to bring awareness to them because these are often topics that aren't talked about because people think that they should be ashamed or they're taboo and mental health just isn't talked about enough. But these kinds of situations and circumstances are not uncommon. They happen so much in so many other different families and they become normalized and that's not healthy. And it's important to talk about them and bring awareness so that we can educate other people to realize that this isn't normal and this shouldn't be tolerated. I'm really grateful that you're here and you're listening. I don't make these types of videos for pity or sympathy of any kind. I don't need any of that. I make it to spread awareness regarding these different types of issues. And to anyone who's watching, I hope that this video made you feel seen and I hope that it made you feel heard. And I know you're struggling. I know how hard it is. I've been there. And I just wanted to let you know that you're not alone. You can do it. And to not give up on yourself. Because if I gave up at 18 years old, I wouldn't be sitting here today with the life that I have now. So even though today is March 2nd, I'm no longer going to let this day haunt me. And I'm taking my power back. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for listening to another part of my story. Bye. He came in on me filming. I don't know if I can finish this video because he's here now. You can do it. No, I can't. Um, I was just talking about you. Yeah. Yes. That's why I'm here. What's going on? <laughs> I feel pretty with my shirt. Look at my fit. Fit check. What do you think of the fit? Come on, baby. They look like you're a queen. Purr.